Hey guys, GhostStore38 here. Today I'm bringing you another YouTube video or a Criterion video. Today I'm going to be unboxing these videos and showing you the contents and the insides. Uh, the pamphlets, booklets, and giving my brief little thoughts on the videos since I, even though I haven't really seen them yet, I'll just, I don't know. Anyway, with that being said, let's get started. Um, I'm going to be opening up this one first. This came out in 1996. This was spine number 998, 998. This is the documentary Muhammad Ali, When We Were Kings. And I'll read you the back of the box. In 1974, Leon Gash traveled to Africa to film Zaire 74, a music festival planned to accompany an unprecedented sports spectacle, The Rumble in the Jungle, in which late career underdog Muhammad Ali would contest with the younger powerhouse George Foreman for the boxing heavyweight championship title, a fight between two blacks and a black nation organized by blacks as a kin, kin, Kinshasa billboard put it. When the main event was delayed, extending Ali's stay in Africa, Gast wound up amassing a treasure trove of footage, observing the wildly charismatic athlete training for one of the toughest bouts of his career while basking in his role as Black America's proud ambassador to the post-colonial Africa. Two decades in the making, When We Were Kings features interviews with Norman Mailer and George Plimpton that illustrate a sensational impact of the fight, rounding out an Academy award winning portrait of Ali that captures his charm, grace, and defiance. Uh, features is... A 4K Transfer, Soul Power, a 2008 documentary about the Zaire Music Festival, directed by Jeffrey Kusama Hinte. New director with new interview with producer George Sonnenberg. Interview with 1997 interview from 1997 with director Leon Gast. Trailer plus an essay by critic Kalefa Sane. It's 87 minutes long and in color. Okay, that's out of the packaging. One disc. Ali Bumbaye was what their chant was. Ali Bumbaye means Ali kill him. At least in the ring anyway, sportsman. Sportsman wise anyway. Here's the book. About the transfers, special thanks, and the essay. Ready to fight. I'm really looking forward to seeing this one. So, that's this one. The next one is... The Completely Snowblood, spine number 790 and 791. If you're familiar with Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill series, this is the one that inspired the making of those movies. Lady Snowblood, the first one, came out in 1973, and its sequel came out in 1974. Um, they were both in Japanese with English subtitles. A young woman, trained from childhood as an assassin, hellbent on revenge, committed against her family, um, to her hacks and slash her way through the gory... Satisfaction in turn 20th century Japan, rampant with intensive violence and choreographed swordplay. Flair for intro cult classics, Lady Snowblood and Lady Snowblood, Love, Song of Vengeance, are bloody and beautiful and extravagant, composed on elegant widescreen composition after another. The first Lady Snowblood was a major inspiration for Quentin Tarantino's Kill Bill, and both of Fujita's films are main cornerstones of Asian action cinema. 2K Restorations, Interviews, The Writer, of the manga that inspired the films, trailers, English subtitle translations, and an essay. This film is going to be a bit lengthy already, but I don't care. Two discs. First Lady Snowblood. And on the back, there's a splash of blood. Here's the book. It's actually a poster. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a it's a fold out poster and the inside of it's the SA. Okay. Cool. Okay. So yeah, that's Lady Snowblood. The 39 Steps, the DVD copy. I've already talked to you about that one at the little mini review. So I'll just open this up and show you the inside contents of the DVD case. Of the DVD copy, but if it's anything like the Blu-ray, um, it should be really quick. Yeah, just the same. It's the inside contents book's the same. Cases, just a little different for disc art, but that's the same one there. Young Mr. Lincoln, directed by John Ford and starring Peter Fonda. Few American historical figures are as revered as Abraham Lincoln, and few director star collaborations embody classic Hollywood cinema as beautifully as one between John Ford and, okay, Henry Fonda. This film, their first together, was Ford's equally poetic and significant follow up to the groundbreaking, br groundbreaking Western Stagecoach, and in it, Fonda gives one of the finest performances of his career as the young president to be a novice lawyer struggling with an incendiary murder case photographed in gorgeous black and white by Ford's frequent collaborator Berg, Bert Glennon. Young Mr. Lincoln is a compassionate and assured work and an indelible piece to Americana. Uh, two, disc, two discs came out in 1939. It's 100 minutes long. It's in black and white. Um, new audio commentary by film scholar Joseph McBride in Search, Searching for John Ford Life. Omnibus John Ford Part 1 filmmaker Lindsay Anderson's profile of the life and work of director John Ford before World War II. Talk show appearance by actor Henry Fonda from 1975. Audio interviews from the 70s with Ford and Fonda. Conducted by the director's grandson Dan Ford. Academy Award radio dramatization of the film. Plus an essay by film critic Jeffrey O'Brien and an homage to, form, to Ford by filmmaker Sir Sergei Einstein. Okay. And this one is spine number 320. Whoops. What the hell? Okay, that's different. Oh, nice. Here's the inside art. And the back cover is him talking to the crowd. The book. Cast. The essay, pictures, which Lincoln by Mr. Ford, and Instagram. Transfers and pictures. Really looking forward to watching this one. I'm a huge history fan, and I really like Abraham Lincoln. He's one of my favorite presidents, so I'll be curious, interested in seeing this. And then the next one here is spine number 432. Oh, yeah, and by the way, the young Mr. Lincoln, the spine number on that one is 320. This one I just kind of picked up as a blind buy because I was kind of curious about it. This is the spy who came in from the cold. Um, this one is spine number 452, and it's two discs and made in 1965 in black and white. And it says it's a claimed best-selling novel by Jean... La Care about a Cold War spy on one final dangerous mission in East Germany is transmuted by director Mar 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 Martin Ritt into a film every bit as precise and ruthless as the book. Richard Burton is a super is superb as Alec Lemos, whose relationship with the beautiful librarian Non, played by Claire Boom Bloom, puts his assignment in jeopardy. The spy who came from the cold is hard edged and tragic thriller. Suffice suffused with the political and social consciousness that defined Ritt's career. Disc 1, theatrical trailer and transfers. Disc 2, interview with author Jean Le Caire from 2008. Selected scene commentary featuring director of photography Oswald Morris, The Secret Center, Jean Le Caire's 2000, from a documentary from 2000, a BBC documentary about the author's extraordinary life and work. A 1967 interview with Richard Burton from the BBC series Acting in the 60s, conducted by film critic Kenneth Tinnen? 
I hope we got that right. An audio conversation from 1985 between director Martin Ritt and film historian Patrick McGillan. Gallery of set designs and an essay by critic Michael Scragow. Hope I pronounced that right. I have never read the book before, so I don't really have much experience with this one. I picked it up because I'm as really huge into history. Still am. Um, so, yeah. So I saw this and wanted to add it to my collection. Two discs. There's a... Uh, okay, it's a fold-out like it was with the um, other, the When We Were Kings, True Writ by Michael Skrigal. That's the essay about the transfers and two discs. I'll be really curious about seeing this one. Again, this is spy number 452, a spy who came in from the cold. Cold War. This came, this is spy number 1005, it came out in 2018, it's in 88 minutes long, it's black and white, Polish, Croatian, Russian, German, Italian, and French with English subtitles, so various languages to choose from. Sweeping Delirious Romance begins in Polish countryside, where Wichter, Tomasz Kot, a musician and state-sponsored musician, or state-sponsored musician to collect folk songs, describes a captivating young singer named Zula in the performance uh, Joanna could have been of the ages over the next 15 years. Our turbulent relationship will play out in stolen moments between the jazz clubs and decadent bohemian Paris in which he escapes in the corrupt repressive communist bloc where she remains. The universe is bridged by their passion for music and each other photographed in luscious monochrome and suffused with the melancholy of the simple folk song that provides a motif for the couple's fateful affair. Pulaski's time of story inspired by... Inspired by that of his own parents, is a heart so many grand vision of star-crossed love caught up in the tide of history. New conversations between the filmmakers, press conference, film festival with the actors, two 2018 programs in the making of the film, featured on scenes, footage, and interviews, new English subtitles, plus an essay. So this story was inspired by the director's parents. Okay, here's that, and... Inside of the oh, okay, folds out all the way. Okay, You're My Only Home by Stephanie. Okay. Hit 1005. I'll be kind of curious to see this. This looks interesting. And one that I've heard people talk about on recommendations, this is Bicycle Thieves. This came out in 1948. This is spine number 374. It's in came out as uh, 89 minutes long. It's black and white in Italian with optional English subtitles. Uh, hailed around the world as one of the greatest movies ever made, Vittorio De, De Sica's Academy Award winning Bicycle Thieves defined an era of cinema in post-war poverty-stricken Rome. A man hoping to support his desperate family with a new job loses his bicycle. This main means of transportation for work with his wide-eyed young son in tow. He sets off to track down the thief. Simple in construction and dazzling rich in human insight. Bicycle thieves embodied all the greatest strengths of the Italian neo-realist movement. Emotional clarity, social righteousness, and brutal honesty. Uh, it's a two-disc set. Um, English... Um, new restored high definition digital transfer, optional English dub soundtrack. New and improved English subtitle translation. Working with Desica, a collection of interviews with the screenwriters and at the actor and film scholar. Life as it is a neo realist movement in Italy. A program on the history of a neo Italian neo realism featuring scholar Mark Shea. Um, a 2003 documentary on screen, our longtime Vittorio De Sica collaborator, directed by Carlo Lazzani. A book featuring essays by critic Godfrey Cheshire, a filmmaker Charles Burnett, remembrances by De Sica, and his collaborators in classic writings by Zvatini and critic Andre Bazin. And the book is right here. And of course, here's the movie. Um, I've heard people reference this one often as uh, one of their um, favorites, 
and highly recommended films to watch. And so I was really curious for myself to see what all the hype was about for it. So I decided to pick it up. Two discs. And here's the book. It's actually, and it's an actual good sized book here. It's not like the pamphlets or anything. It's a good sized book. The essays. Nice. This is very nice. The essays, some of the writings, talks about the movie and a lot of other good material. I'm really curious about reading that. Really looking forward to watching this movie. And it's a really nice addition to my collection. And probably going to be one of my favorites. Anyway, spine number 374, Bicycle Thieves. And lastly, the French adaptation, probably their first screen film version of The Beauty and the Beast. Spine number 6. Um, 1946, 93 minutes long, black and white, in French with English subtitles. Uh, Jean Cocteau's sublime adaption of Madame la Prince de Beaumont's fairy tale masterpiece in which the pure love of a beautiful girl melts the heart of feral but gentle beast is the landmark of motion picture fantasy with unforgettable romantic performances by Jean Marais and Josette Day. The spectacular visions of enhancement, desire, and death in Beauty and the Beast, La Belle et la Bete, have become timeless icons of cinematic wonder. High definition transfers. Philip Glass's opera La Belle La Bete, presented in 5.1 surround as an optional as an alternate soundtrack. Two commentaries, one by film historian Arthur Knight and one by writer and cultural historian Sir Christopher Frailing. Screening at the Majestic, a 1995 docu documentary featuring interviews with the cast and crew. Interview with cinematographer Henry Alaken. Rare behind the scenes photos and publicity stills. Film restoration demonstration. Original theatrical directed, original trailer directed and narrated by Jean Juan Cocteau, and the 1995 restoration trailer, plus an essay by film critic Jeffrey O'Brien. Um, obviously, this is not Disney, the Disney animated film. I'll actually be kind of curious to see how this fair, how, how this one goes. Although, if you know the story of Beauty and the Beast, then you probably obviously know what happens. Picture of Belle and some about reindeer. Oh no, there's the beast. There's probably Dark Magic about the restoration, and here's the essay. So, yeah. This is Avant Beast Prince Ardant Belle Felice. Jean Belle's father. Okay, so that's Beauty and the Beast. I'll be kind of curious to see how it goes, and I'll be excited. So yeah, that's all of them. Finally, it was nice to finally get around to talking about these, or at least showing them. And yeah. First one I'd probably have to say that all I watch is the Muhammad Ali. And then Mr. Lincoln. The First Lady Snowblood. Bicycle Thieves. Beauty and the Beast. Spike came from the cold. Cold War. Because I've already seen this one on Blu-ray. So I'll kind of just... I've seen it once already, so I'm good. So yeah. Um, that's the video. I hope you guys liked this little in insight look. And I'll be coming to you with more cartoon videos in the future. Until then, just hang in there. Um, be sure to hit that like if you enjoyed this video. Comment below your favorite Criterion video. And be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification for more videos just like these. And until then, I will see you guys next time with another video. Take care, ladies and gentlemen. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.